Hey. So many of you know that I came up with the idea for Back to Dixie way back in the mid-90s, but only recently started to write it in 2020, almost 25 years later. So I asked myself, why? You know, why did I wait so long to really start to write the book? And my on-the-surface answer is that I had just too much going on with work obligations, with family obligations. I didn't have the time to focus in putting out a novel, especially my first novel. But if I drill down a little bit further, I have to attribute my delay in large part to my role in corporate America at the time. And by that I mean you're taught to stay away from controversial topics. Um, no politics, no religion, and especially no race. So we went through our days pretending like everyone was genderless, ageless, raceless beings. And that's how we did it. And then on the other hand, I've got this book idea, this, this great book idea, uh, a, a haunting book idea that is filled with strong racial themes. I mean, it's introducing a form of modern day slavery, for heaven's sake. And I just couldn't reconcile the two. I, I, I couldn't figure out a way to live in that world where I'm writing freely in, 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 in this world of Back to Dixie. And so I just delayed. I just didn't write it. I told myself to come up with less controversial topics to write about. And I came up with a bunch of those things over the years, but I just kept coming back to this story that was compelling me to write it. But it wasn't until the company relocated in 2020 and I took a severance to try something new that I really felt free enough to, to, to write this book. I, I felt free enough that I could write it how I wanted to write it and with no restrictions. You know, Toni Morrison in a 2012 interview really, you know, hit it on the head when, when, when she said this. The problem of being free to write the way you wish to without this other racialized gaze is a serious one for an African-American writer. Very serious. Toni called it the white gaze and she described it as a little white man sitting on her shoulder, looking at everything she wrote and giving his advice of things that she should include and things that she should take out. And it wasn't until she knocked him off of her shoulder that she felt liberated to write how she wanted to write with the voice that she wanted to write with. And that resonated with me right away in that my guy, though, is from HR. And he looks at my writing and says things like, what's your team going to think about that last chapter? Or you're really being liberal with the use of the N-word, Len. We don't all say that. Or that's a really stereotypical comment you just made there in that dialogue, Len. And to tell the truth, it was numbing. You know, I felt like I had to get this stamp of approval from that voice and by me getting that stamp of approval, I wasn't free to express myself the way I wanted to express. I, I wasn't free to create and let the story develop and, 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 and get a life of its own. And because of that, I just could not write the book. I think Tony says it really well right here. As though our lives have no meaning and no depth without the white gaze. And I've spent my entire writing life trying to make sure that the white gaze was not the dominant one in any of my books. But how though? How do I free myself to write how I want to write without the influence of that voice? I, to be honest, I never figured it out while I was in the corporate system. It wasn't until afterwards that I was able to explore a little bit more. And, you know, I think others have better success with it. I'm just telling you, I couldn't, I couldn't reconcile the two. 
And it was a subconscious thing because I knew that I needed to. I just could not find a way to, to reconcile the two things. And it was something that even after I left corporate America, that once you're operating for so long under certain parameters, you start to become conditioned. Um, and those walls, those barriers that prevented me from really expressing myself, they were removed. But I didn't know that they were removed. To me, I'm still operating in those same parameters because that's what I knew. And it wasn't until I started to explore, I, I pushed against that wall and realized, oh, it, it wasn't there. And, figured out, okay, let me, let me expand a little bit or let me explore a little bit and, and to, to, to really see what my voice is because it was so long since I used and wrote in my authentic voice that it took me a while to be reintroduced to it and to recognize, oh, <laughs> that's my voice. That's not something that I'm trying to, 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 to get through the the, the uh, communications department review or the legal department review, you know, this is my voice. And it was really liberating to finally be able to, to, to explore and to write how I wanted to write, to be authentic in that, um, in, in that expression. And it was so freeing that I knew that I was never free uh, before. And I knew that I'm going to treasure this freedom and I'm going to really take advantage and to, to, to explore that in my work. And that's what I'm committed to do. Another clip from Tony. Only because there was a language, there was a posture, there were the parameters, I could step in now and I didn't have to be consumed by or be concerned by the white gaze. That was the liberation for me. It has nothing to do with who reads the books. Everyone, I hope, of any race, any gender, any country. But my sovereignty and my authority as a racialized person had to be struck immediately with the very first book. I want to offer this bit of advice to the writers and the creators and do not compromise your voice. Say what you feel. Express yourself authentically. And if you start to hear a voice questioning whether you should say this this way or say this at all, suppress the outside noise. You know, learn how to distinguish the voice that's going to push you through those fake boundaries and walls from the one that will have you conformed by them, limiting you. You deserve to be free to create. You know, remember that. You deserve to be free to create, and your voice is important. So use it. Or simply put, just do you, no matter what anyone else thinks. And if you can't get there completely, just try and get a little bit closer each day. Try to let your writing reflect that.